Hey, what's up guys? So I get a ton of questions regarding D aspartic acid. And uh, to be quite frank, I understand why the research on D aspartic acid is super confusing. And on top of that, um, it's almost impossible nowadays to find a testosterone boosting stack out there that does not contain uh, D aspartic acid. And so in this video, essentially what I want to do is dig through the research uh, a little bit and then essentially come to a conclusion as to whether or not D aspartic sucks or not. So let's go ahead and dive right in. This video is sponsored by Let's Get Checked. Now, D aspartic acid is the D isomer of the amino acid um, aspartic acid, which is the ionic form of aspartate. And now, aspartic acid and aspartate both have several different roles in the human body. However, its most popular and interesting mechanism is its possible role in testosterone production. Now, when it comes to the research on D aspartic acid, there are two primary categories of research. One is um, the category category of research that has been performed on hypogonadic men. And then the second class of research that we're going to be looking at today in this video is uh, the research that has been performed in um, healthy, young, active men. Now, the first study we're going to look at today is this study right here, where the researchers found that daily D aspartic acid supplementation could increase testosterone um, in young, healthy, active men by 22% uh, at six days and 42% by day 20. 12. And now, obviously, this is super promising. However, when we look at this study that found completely conflicting results, um, this study in particular found that there was absolutely no increase in testosterone um, at 30 days of supplementation. Now, the current theory that has been proposed in several different places um, is that D aspartic acid may be able to increase testosterone levels in young, healthy, active men um, for a around two weeks, whereby it subsequently decreases back to baseline by day 30. However, I don't think this theory um, is entirely accurate simply because D aspartic acid actually um, builds in effectiveness over time. And so you would expect that if there was a 22% increase um, at day six and then a 42% increase at day 12, that you would expect that there would be some level of improvement um, at day 30 as well. However, um, in that second study that we referenced, it is somewhat clear that um, at least in young, healthy, active men, that D aspartic acid doesn't have an effect on testosterone levels. And so what I think is more likely going on here is that if we take a closer look at that first study that was referenced, you'll see that the participants of that study were actually recruited from a fertility clinic. And so it actually doesn't look like these young, healthy, active men were young and healthy. So it is extremely likely that these men um, may have had some level of hypogonadism um, or some level of um, disruption in testicular function. And this is why it's so important to actually read studies um, before drawing conclusions about specific compounds. Even though the researchers of this study described these men as young and healthy, again, it doesn't really appear that that was necessarily the case. And so all in all, when it comes to the research on D aspartic acid in young, healthy, active men, I don't think the research is super promising for that specific cohort of individuals. However, when it comes to the research in hypogenetic and infertile men, I do think the research is a whole lot more promising. Now, in this study in particular that was performed in hypogenetic infertile men, uh, there was roughly a 30 to 60% increase in testosterone levels and D aspartic acid was also apparently highly effective at increasing sperm parameters, uh, fertility rates and pregnancy rates as well, which is extremely promising because it shows that D aspartic acid isn't just a compound that may improve um, testosterone production, um, but also uh, may improve testicular health as well. Now in this study as well, the uh, researchers actually overall didn't find a statistically significant um, improvement 
improvement in testosterone production. However, when the uh, the cohort of subjects was stratified into subgroups, uh, the group that had uh, clinically low testosterone did see about a 20% increase in testosterone levels over the course of a month. And so when you take these two studies in combination with the original study that was referenced, it does appear that uh, diasporic acid does have some level of effect on um, uh, testosterone production at the end of the day, as well as testicular function, which is extremely promising. However, again, it is also worth noting that if you are a young, healthy, active man um, in the, your 20s, that you probably won't see a significant difference in testosterone levels uh, by taking something like diaspartic acid. Now, when it comes to the mechanisms of action here, I do think this is fairly interesting. Um, there are three specific mechanisms of action that I want to walk through here. And the first one is that uh, diaspartic acid seems to um, increase and directly stimulate the hypothalamus to stimulate the pituitary gland to release uh, gonadic tropic uh, hormones such as luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Now, another super interesting uh, mechanism of action here is that diaspartic acid also appears to augment the effects of HCG on testosterone production. And so this isn't entirely uh, relevant to everyone. However, if you are taking something like HCG for uh, fertility purposes, it does appear that diaspartic acid actually improves the responsiveness of the lytic cells to produce testosterone in the presence of HCG. Now, the third mechanism of action here appears to be that diaspartic acid is able to increase the expression of a protein known as the star protein, which is a protein that's highly involved in the conversion of cholesterol into um, sex hormones. And so by obviously increasing the expression of this protein, there is a theoretical improvement and the ability of the testicles to take cholesterol and actually turn it into testosterone. So now all in all, when it comes to diaspartic acid and testosterone production, um, again, I don't think it is a good choice for um, individuals that are in their 20s and looking for a, just a testosterone boost. Um, it's probably not going to work in that manner. However, if you're someone like myself who has passed PED use and are trying to jumpstart your natural production of testosterone, maybe after a cycle or are trying to lower your TRT uh, dosage, diaspartic acid may be an effective tool kind of like as an adjunct to uh, jumpstart the stimulation of the hypothalamus to stimulate uh, the lytic cells of the testes to produce testosterone on its own again. Now, with all that being said, in reference to testosterone, there's also another interesting mechanism um, of diaspartic acid that I want to touch on in this video, and that is its possible cognitive enhancing properties as well. Now, the research here is extremely preliminary. However, there is a singular rodent trial that does suggest that uh, supplementation with diaspartic acid may improve cognitive function to some degree. And now there are a couple of different mechanisms that may be at play here. One is that diaspartic acid does appear to improve um, NMDA signaling in the central nervous system. And now uh, the NMDA receptor is a receptor that is uh, stimulated by glutamate as well as some other um, minor neurotransmitters. However, the NMDA receptor is highly involved in the consolidation of memory as well as alertness. And so by theoretically being able to stimulate this receptor, diaspartic acid may um, have somewhat of a, um, a cognitive enhancing properties to it as well. And not only does diaspartic acid appear to stimulate the NMDA receptor, but it also appears to have um, some level of involvement in dendritic outgrowth of neural cells, which are the kind of like the branches in the spines that uh, branch out from neurons in order to connect with other neurons. And so uh, there is a lone study that implicates diaspartic acid at improving dendritic length by up to 40%, which is, um, again, somewhat promising for uh, diaspartic acid as a nootropic compound. Now, with all of that being said, I am somewhat of a fan of diaspartic acid. It's been in my cupboard for uh, several years now, and I take it on and off. Um, to be quite frank, I don't notice a ton of of difference with it, which is why I don't um, really recommend it to a lot of people. However, the research is somewhat decent on it. And so if you are particularly um, hypogenetic and are looking for something to naturally stimulate the production of testosterone, again, it does seem to be a good option. And because it is just simply 
an amino acid. It has an extremely high safety profile and doesn't need to be cycled. And so it's just a really simple supplement for a, a lot of folks that are looking for kind of just something basic to start out with when it comes to jump starting the HPG axis. Now, if you're looking for natural ways to increase testosterone levels, one of the first steps is going to be actually getting a complete hormone profile done. Everyone's hormones are at a completely different place. And so there just really isn't a one size fits all approach to optimizing your hormone profile. The approach that is effective for one guy may actually be detrimental to another. And so if you haven't had your hormone profile checked yet, I would highly recommend looking into my friends over at Let's Get Checked. They have one of the most comprehensive tests on the market. And what's more is that you can actually do it at home. Now, this is a super sweet deal. So make sure to check out the link in the description down below uh, for 30% off of your test. But other than that, guys, if you're looking for more proven supplements that can be used to safely increase testosterone levels, make sure to check out the free guide that I have on my website. But other than that, guys, I think that's all I have for you today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.